So I'm uh, Ilka Nameren from the Institute of Marine Research, uh, representing uh, for you now the Norwegian management plans. I'm pa I've been part of the of the monitoring group that's report on the state of Norwegian uh, open seas, starting up with the Barents Sea ten years ago. I was not involved at that time, but I've been involved last uh, eight years. I have made this presentation on behalf of the of the monitoring group with, with my colleagues uh, Geir Ottersen and Per Arneberg from the Institute and uh, Anne Bede Storeng from the Directory of Climate and Environment and Cecilia from Piltok from the Polar in Norwegian Polar Institute. And I want to, uh, I've been told that uh, quite a few have heard about these management plans before in details. So I go and uh, I think Eric Olsen will uh, come into these plans in his talk as well. And uh, Per. So I will uh, have a quick run through how we, they are set up. And I will talk a little about uh, what we have achieved, some of the, what might call flaws, and what, or rather is a, challenge and how uh, we within the groups are considering how to develop. This is an, an these management plans are, uh, it has been uh, done for the management or the Norwegian management, for the Norwegian government and the parliament, so we can't change it, we have to advise, it's all for, all for advice and not for your jurisdiction. So, it, so this is uh, I, this uh, point about the indicators will be uh, actually I think I dropped it out because Per is doing that much better in his talk. And I have some more time on uh, comparing what we're doing in Norway with a little bit with the international approaches, case of cases from NOAA and ISIS, but also others, and how we implement the integrated ecosystem assessment in the Norwegian ecosystem-based management. The purpose is to provide the framework for sustainable use of natural resources and ecosystem services for the society. While we, of course, need to maintain the structure, functions, and productivity and diversity of the area's ecosystems, and this is uh, the same for the Bering Sea, for the Norwegian Sea, and for the North Sea. And this is the same group of people that uh, are uh, lead it, working with the reports and the states of the art for all these oceans. There are a lot of white papers describing the, the areas and what we are to do to enlighten the government. The set of the ecosystem based management in Norway are for the management by knowledge scientific advice, integration, integrated ecosystem assessment, policy resolutions based on the science and the, so, and the stakeholders. They are set up environmental goals. There are measures and means how to meet them. That is run by the ministries and the directorates for different sectors. The directorates are also doing the control and execution. And then the science is going back to improve on the knowledge. The process for the plans that are, we have the databases, impact sources, there's where we have the first uh, connections with the stakeholders. Giving uh, being informed of what uh, the science results and the plans and giving their um, opinions and their knowledge. We're going on to cumulative assessments, also with stakeholders, and with special care about uh, particular valued areas. Coming up with this holistic management plan every, now it's every 10th year, I think. It should be revised coordinated monitoring of indicators decided by the government on the advice from the scientists. And again, 
with the, with the involvement of the stakeholders. We are in the start of having a new revision of the Barents Sea for the next three years. It will be a revised plan about 2019-2020. The organization is uh, this uh, intergovernmental steering committee. It's five ministries, actually nine ministries involved in uh, making the original plans. The steering committee is by five ministries led by the Ministry of uh, Climate and Environment. They changed the name too often now. I'm not sure it's the correct name. The, uh, this steering committee are getting information from the management forum led by the Directorate of Environment and the monitoring group led by Institute of Marine Research where I am involved. There are huge groups with uh, 12 units combined with the research institute <coughs> management units, that's mostly directorates, and a representative for the monitoring group. Like twice in the monitoring group, we got the representative for the management forum, seven research institutes and eight management units, mostly directorates. So this, as I said, is knowledge-based management. That's, uh, so that's why, uh, that's very important because the directorates, they don't want to be told what to do, they, they're not supposed to be told what to do, they are going to be advised and they need to be sure that these advice are based on knowledge, not by uh, opinion or best guesses. We try as we can, but as everyone knows, we don't have all the knowledge we need, but we do the best. They get the best advice we can give them. These are based at the monitoring group reporting on the states and the development. We are uh, focused on the ecosystem structure and functioning. But uh, having the directorates with us, we will also come up with the impacts of a human activity on the ecosystem. We do need to keep track of all the human activities, fisheries, oil and gas, shipping, mainly. And we are still working on, and we have this uh, ecosystem service now in all these open sea areas to keep building up a sound scientific basis, not only on commercial catches, commercial species, but also on the structure and functioning of the ecosystems. It's been going on for about 10 years, so it's still away from being, having a very, very strong databases, but they're, they're quite good and getting better. Like I said, they are updated on a regular basis. They used to be every five years, now it's uh, 10 or 15 years uh, basis. The new government decided to, it cost too much to do it too often. Some long-term positive results. We got this ecosystem service, area of particular values, and these uh, spatial plans are really, really important and it's uh, been very good for having Transsectional discussions on where do we find a particular value for what sector and having a com communication and in between the sectors. They, uh, that's uh, truly, truly an improvement. They can now talk together between oil and gas fisheries and so on, and the environment. We got an increased knowledge of pollutants, distribution and levels from all kinds of sources. Quite a lot of this is uh, long transport, transported long ways. We got more focus on seabirds and benthic communities through the programs, mapping programs of Mariano and the monitoring program on CPOP, on seabirds. And the increased acknowledgement for the ecosystem consideration is now <coughs> very obvious in the fisheries management. They were slower to con come in, but they are definitely on the track now. <coughs> but the, in, in the, what's really, really important for the social side, for the social so and the stakeholders are this improved communication between stakeholder directorates, stakeholder management. And 
to a some degree between stakeholders, but not to that degree. We still have some way to go. So the focus now is to improve all the overarching processes and revision of plans to make that even better. And like someone said, like she said, the, the, the politicians read the last chapter. In the monitoring group, we had this last chapter as the first chapter. What's new, what's changed, what need to be uh, focused by the managers and the policy makers is the first chapter of the state of the art report every third year. Because we know this is for use, not for uh, show how much you can, but show what they need to do or what you thought they should do, what they should focus on because we can't tell them what to do. We want to continue research and monitoring and to improve the collaboration with the, within the country and with other countries. We are making reports and publications. And we need to be better to connect to international processes, international groups. <coughs> so we need and continue to be on focusing on scientific basis. Evaluation of the indicators, this is based on indicators. We need to in evaluate these indicators better and that pair will take that part later on in this meeting. We need to go into integrated ecosystem assessment. As so far, the report are on uh, sp species, spent, uh, ecosystem groups, activities. They're not, they don't have a method yet to integrate it integrate all this information. We, we collect it all in one report. So we have these goals. Some of them, most of them are not quantified. They are supposed to be at that space of our uh, advice. They are mostly based on this good ecosystem uh, health. So what we to make of them? We have to be more specific. We are try to get it more uh, operational by uh, suggesting for the management and the policy makers how can we, what can, what can we deliver and how can we make it, uh, this information operational for the management. We have these operational goals, evaluations, we are still working on it, like that will come in another talk, and set the indicators relevant, that's relevant for those goals we actually have been given. It's not quite there yet. And we need to link them to measures. And that's a work in progress. We need to base them on international convention, of course, agreements and nationally decided goals. And we have to be specific within each ecosystem-based management plan, like we had three in Norway. We can't have the same goals for the North Sea with all the activities and all the nations sharing that one ocean to the Barents Sea, where share with the Russians, is a completely different ecosystem. We need to be specific for each. And again, we need to define this specificity to what are we monitoring, what parameters or indicators do we use. Back to the Arctic, the Barents Sea, we need to ensure the full commitment of international obligations. That's all global, it's also the word OSPAR to the European obligations. We are reporting through the Norwegian, the national obligation to this uh, white papers and the report to the government on the state. We have this uh, MUSH, the environment monitoring of the Svalbard and the mine reports. We got a joint PINRO IMR report of the state of the Barents Sea, Norwegian Russian collaboration. We report to the OSPAR commissions, we report to the Region Seas program of ICS, in addition to all the uh, fish and uh, Baltic and seabird reports. There are a lot of obligations, a lot of reports, and we are working on how to make this more efficient, because on, until now, and we got the, of course, the, from the Arctic Council. Last time we did the evaluation of the Barents Sea, we did it 
side by side with the Arctic Council work, we didn't even aware of it because even within the Institute at that time there was not enough communication. We need to improve on that. So we uh, I'll just skip that. So we are working to read this ecosystem assessment, holistic statement with evaluation of man's impact. And this man's impact of course is important to give advice on. We need the relevant series, data series. We are building on them. We have to avoid excessive data and surveillance because this is costly. We need to have it all as transparent. This is taxpayers' money. And we need to get this report system better so we don't have to make seven different reports on the same data. We have to write one report that can be shared. So we are looking at uh, internationals coming. We have got quite a way, right? But uh, in Oscar got the assistant report. We got uh, the framework directives over in EU. But uh, I think NOAA and ISIS are onto something we really want to keep an eye on and collaborate on, if possible. We need to have a bridge between science and advice. And not only so natural science, but also social science. And that's uh, we need to have uh, include social science in Norway. We're not there yet. So the human dimensions is really, really something we need to... Uh, we have the directorates, they have it already, but we need to humanness, social science is not really in, in there yet. Like NOAA got their human social science within their program. So the, we got some in common, we got some differences, and we li really like to um, take these no, no points by Rebecca Schuford and uh, connect to them. And we got this uh, loop for an uh, integrated ecosystem approach. We aren't onto something of the same. But like I, we were at a face-to-face -face seminar on NOAA in uh, February and uh, we got the uh, closing the loop, now we have the breaking the loop, perhaps. There's a lot of uh, loops within the loops, so that's really important. The indicators are going somewhere is nowhere, somewhere is... That's, uh, that's, that's a ch really a challenge. What's, what's an indicator? What are we indicating and what are we using them for? But uh, common for the NOAA and the Norwegian system, we have the assessment, the management, the risk is, uh, we should learn something from the wise. The ICS we are reporting to, to this uh, region sees building foundation sites, integrated ecosystem understanding. So we have made, uh, we have uh, produced information to uh, ICS to get this, uh, the fishery is the main, and the rest is not really important for the BNC because they are short in time and short and spatial, not really. Locals, uh, local in this Bering Sea, they don't uh, spread out. So fisheries are put on the main pressure. What we like about uh, ICS is that we use the scientific base and it's not a model statistics uh, to make it too simplified. We actually use the information we got as it is. We report, like I said, to a lot of uh, authorities, environments, we got stakeholders, NGOs, and we need to uh, get, a get involved the stakeholders and the goals, probably even better. We try to have annual meetings, it didn't work out. We have to keep them in the loop because they got information we need. You have to be transparent, keep the policy and science apart. That's very important for us. Even if we need, we do advise the policymakers, they have to make the policy decisions. We don't step in their ways, but we need to get them the best possible background to do their decisions. We need the goals and relations to be specific. We need the indicators or parameters, whatever you like to call it. They have to be fit for the relation and they have to be what we need and not more. Measure linked to environmental goals. Of course, regular goal evaluations. That's what we already got and we want to keep on going that way. So I want to thank you for that on behalf of all this wonderful group.